Welcome to my lecture online. Now let's talk about current resistivity, resistance, and Ohm's law. Well, starting with current, we define current as being the rate of change or the amount of charges passing by a given point per unit time, dQ dt. So what are the units for current? Well, we know that charge, the units for charge is coulombs, and time would be seconds. And so we can see clearly then that the units for current is simply coulombs per second. The amount of coulombs, the amount of charge passing by a given point per unit time. What is current density? Current density is defined as the current divided by the cross-sectional area through which it passes. So the cross-sectional area of the conducting material through which the current is flowing. So we can then find the units for that by starting with the unit of current, which is coulombs per second, and then dividing that by 1 over the area. The area would be meter squared. That means that the standard units for current density is coulombs per second per meter squared. Now resistivity. Resistivity has to do with the property of a material that opposes the flow of current. So we call that resistivity, and we use a Greek letter rho to define that. It's defined as the strength of the electric field through which the current passes, or what causes the current to flow, divided by the current density. Since we now have the current density, and we know the units for, or I should say we know the units for current density, and we know the units for electric field, we should be able to find the units for resistivity. So this is equal to, or I shouldn't say equal to because it's not equal to, we're simply giving you the units of that. Electric field would be newtons per coulomb, and the current density would be the, uh, since we're dividing by the current density, we simply take the inverse of that, so we have seconds meters squared per coulomb. Now, to define that a little bit better, we can convert newtons into what newtons is equal to. Newtons can be defined as kilograms meters per second square. So we have seconds in the numerator, we have meters squared in the numerator, and in the denominator we have a coulomb squared. So now we can simplify because this second counts out one of those. We can combine the meters, and so we then know that the unit for resistivity is kilograms meters cubed divided by seconds times coulomb squared. Those are the basic units of resistivity. Now the concept of resistance. That is the measure of the opposition to current for a device. And so we take the property, the material, the property of the material that it's made out of times the length of the device divided by the cross-sectional area. So that means we take the units of resistivity, which we have right there, which is kilograms meters cubed divided by seconds times coulomb squared, and then we multiply that times the ratio of the length, which is in meters, divided by the area, which is meters squared. Of course, this cancels out one of those, so we get one over meters, which will reduce that by one meter. So this will be equal to kilogram instead of meters cubed. We now have meters squared divided by seconds times coulomb squared. And this would be the proper units for resistance. Now, of course, the units for resistance is in terms of ohms. So this will therefore equal to the units of ohms, which cannot be defined as kilograms meters squared per second per coulomb squared. Also, going back to there, what are the basic units for current? Well, the basic unit for current is amps, so we could write that this is equal to amps, and let's write it out here, amps or amperage, so coulombs per second is the unit for amps, so amps can be defined as coulomb per second. Current density is current, which is amps per unit area per square meter, so this can be defined as amps per square meter. Since amps is coulombs per second, like this, we can define that as amps per square meter. What about resistivity? Well, that would be newtons per coulomb for the electric field divided by the current density, which is amps per square meter, so we can define it as such. But it's probably better to look at resistance because the common unit for resistance is ohms, so ohms is defined as kilograms meter squared per second per coulomb squared. 
And finally, Ohm's law. If we take Ohm's law, we know that the current flow through a circuit is equal to the voltage applied divided by the resistance in the circuit, which means the resistance can also be defined as voltage divided by current. Now, we know the units for current, we have that up here, but do you remember the units for voltage? Well, let's think about it. We know that voltage can be defined as the electric field times the distance traveled through it, and the electric field has units of newtons per coulomb, and the distance is meters. So voltage can be expressed as newton meters per coulomb. And so let's see if we get the very same results that we have over there for resistance. So finding the units here, we take voltage, which is newtons meters per coulomb, and then divide by the units of, or multiply times, I should say divide, right, by the units of current. Current is coulombs per second, but since we divide by that, we write seconds per coulomb. And now if we write out what newtons are equal to, this can now be written as kilograms, meters per second square, times meters, times seconds in the numerator, divided by coulomb square in the denominator. So notice all I did here was take newtons and write as kilograms, meters per second square. Now we can simplify things a little bit. One second cancels out one of these, and we have meter squared in the numerator, so this becomes equal to kilogram meter squared per second times coulomb squared, and we should get the exact same result as we got over there, which we did, and we know that this is equal to the standard units for resistance, which is ohms. Again, what is kind of interesting, that just like in the previous video with capacitance, which is in terms of ferrets, which could be reduced to the standard units. And same here, resistance can be reduced to the standard units. Even current amps can be reduced to the standard units of meters, kilograms, seconds, and charge coulombs. And that's how it's done.